Okay, so I'm just going to go over notes on uh, how populations change and different types of uh, growth. Uh, the four things that you have to know about how populations change are that um, births and deaths also um, obviously change populations. And then we also have immigration and emigration. Okay, and immigration is just when you move into an area. And the I in immigration helps you to remember that that's in. And then there's emigration. And emigration is when you leave a population. So E is exit, leave. Okay, that's a way that you're going to remember it. So these are the four ways that uh, populations um, are changed. Births, deaths, immigration, and emigration. Okay, and then uh, you needed to know the difference between um, logistic growth and exponential growth, okay? And it's just two curves with time as the x-axis. So over the course of time, these changes in the population occur. And then um, the y-axis is the actual population, okay? And what you have to know about this is that this is exponential growth. This is when a population grows so rapidly, because you see, this is time here. So over a very, very short period of time, we're having this massive amount of growth. And if you remember in math, they talked about the slope. So the steeper the slope of the line, um, the faster the rate. Okay, so this is exponential growth. Um, and this usually occurs um, in populations. Well, the human population is obviously... Um, this because uh, our planet is undergoing some major growth right now. Um, bacteria grow this quickly, really, really fast. So any organism that can grow really fast um, will experience exponential growth. And then if you look at the other curve, it's called logistic growth. And it's kind of cool when you actually look at this because if you actually take off this part of the curve, it looks like exponential to begin with. And this is what I want you guys to understand populations will grow quite rapidly until a certain point at which they start to level off or stabilize, okay? And when it label, levels off like that, that, that's generally where the population is going to stay quite stable. And this uh, part of the graph where it levels off is called carrying capacity. And that's the number of organisms that um, an environment can can handle. So um, once you reach carrying capacity, um, it, it gets a little bit difficult to sustain um, any more organisms. So for example, if we're talking about a forest ecosystem and there's deer, um, you know, there might be a, um, um, resources that run out, like food and, and water and shelter and space and finding mates. So those are some of the things that um, you have to know about populations, okay? The next thing that you have to know is the kinds of things that bring a community to carrying capacity or that affect populations, okay? And these are called limiting factors. So those limit the population. And there's two types. Uh, and you have to know each of them and the, the things that they um, involve. So there's density. Dependent limiting factors, dependent, and there's density independent limiting factors. And the density dependent limiting factors are the things that limit the population because of the density of the population. So the more organisms there are in the population, the, um, the faster they're going to be limited. And those types of factors are things like food, shelter, finding a mate, space, water, all of those resources that organisms need to stay alive. And there's a couple more that are um, density dependent. And these are um, predators. And um, the predators the reason that the predators are a density dependent limiting factor is because when there are lots of organisms in an area, the predators will actually go there because it's easier to catch somebody if you're um, if there's lots of them there. Think about shark feeding; they they 
they follow schools of fish. They don't just, you know, randomly go around and look for an individual fish. So the more individuals there are, the, the higher the density of the population, the more predators will be there. And the next one is disease. Disease will spread much more quickly in a very dense population. So those are the things that are density dependent limiting factors. And then we have density independent limiting factors. And those are the things that it really doesn't matter how many individuals there are, it's still going to um, affect the population. And those are things like natural disasters and humans. We ruin everything. Uh, so human um, activity is definitely density independent. Because it doesn't matter how many organisms there are, they're all going to be affected or limited by natural disasters or humans. Okay, and the last thing that we had to talk about was um, the human population over the course of time. Um, and the graph that was in the book um, showed a graph something like this. It's not the greatest artist, but it was some, um, so from 10,000 BC all the way till 2000. And it shows these events in history, and some of the major events they talked about was agriculture. And agriculture changed our human population because we were no longer hunter-gatherers. We could actually um, farm, keep livestock, keep crops. Remember we had breakfast? Okay, and then the next thing that um, led to uh, an increase in the human population was actually related to agriculture. It was plowing, so they learned how to um, you know, move the soil around, they had a little bit more knowledge about how to work the soil, and irrigation. And irrigation not only, well, for crops, but for um, society. Uh, if you look at um, history, uh, when they introduced um, the aqueducts in um, ancient history, that really changed the, um, the human population because they were able to bring water to communities. The next major event actually is a decrease in the human population, and that was the plague, the bubonic plague, the black plague, and this was devastating to the world's population. I think we lost um, a third of the world's population at this point, uh, so that's a pretty big thing. And the plague was when people started traveling around from country to country, they were actually carrying diseases to new areas. So. Um, this was the big thing that uh, made a, quite a significant change in the human population. And then we have, woo, this crazy exponential growth in our population. And that started after the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution brought many, many changes to society and um, allowed the human population to um, actually uh, go like crazy.